Hi guys, it's Rich Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village. I'm reviewing and testing the new Titleist 718 AP2 iron. I've got the 7, the 4 and the pitching wedge. I'm reviewing them on GC Quad using Real Pro V1 golf balls and giving you a bit of a rundown of how these golf clubs perform. Now Titleist is bringing out six sets of irons this year and the AP2 sits in the category for the better players. They're tour irons, that's what they're saying. It's the most, it's the biggest size head in the tour iron range. And I think this almost filters slightly into the better players, mid handicap players, and probably just a touch higher, just from the way that the club is designed and the way it looks in size wise. Now the AP2 has been around for a while now. I think it's been around for nearly eight years or so. And this whole look, the cosmetic look of this iron is pretty awesome. They have sleeked it down. They have made it very, very kind of just clean, very sharp. They've managed to make the lines on the head a little bit more horizontal because that was a big complaint in the last AP2 iron. And they've just given it this really beautiful look. I think it looks stunning. This is a forged iron. So it's, I'm imagine it's gonna feel a, a little bit softer than some of the other irons in the, in the range. And the lofts are very kind of standard lofts, very neutral lofts. So this is the seven iron at 34 degrees. Now from three to seven iron, there is tungsten weighting in the toe that's helping the better player, not particularly, if they do miss center, not get punished that much. But from eight, nine, pitching wedge, the tungsten has disappeared because they're more kind of scoring golf clubs. Let's give this a hit. So I'm looking forward to this. Every golf club that I'm testing in the Titleist range, I've got in steel X100 shafts. That is a lovely looking golf club. There's very little to it. It's a simple design. Mm, gorgeous. Shiny. Right, let's give this a hit. Yeah, that's, that's a good golf shot. I don't think I'm going to get to that flag at 180. I put it a little bit further out than what I needed to. It's total distance 180, but we're looking more for carry distance there on the irons. Yeah, that was a nice hit. Came out lovely. 167 carry. Now, I would probably predict for a 34 degree loft, it'll be around that range. There's 167 carry. You can tell that I've struck it pretty centralized. It's come out very, very neutral. The spin rate was good at 6,500. And it went super high, really up in the air. So that, that ball is going to stop on the green as well. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan of the 716 feel off the AP2. And I am so glad they've improved that feel. Because this, this is a lovely feel. Sound-wise, it's lovely. Feel, it's lovely. And looks, it's great. It's kind of hitting all the right criteria. This is never going to be the longest golf club that I test in the Titleist range. Certainly now they've introduced these distance irons that we're, they're classifying it as. Just a good-looking golf club. I think it's a, lot of, a lot of players will switch into... This, if they're using, certainly the tall players, I can imagine them moving from seven. It was always a bit of a harder transition between 714 to 716 iron. You look at even someone like Jordan Spieth, he really struggled to switch. But I think this one, I think you're going to see a lot more players switch into this. It just looks great. It feels superb. I think its biggest downfall is potentially it's not going to get the distances that you would normally see with a seven iron. Certainly the loft and the stronger golf clubs, but true to loft, it's hitting the right distances. I've hit three lovely shots on the green there. One, seven, three carry, but I did slightly pull it offline. That has come out lovely. Feels good, really good answer. So if we just look at the data from three shots there with a seven iron, um, so really good numbers. Carrying at 168, like I said, I don't think it's gonna get the 170 plus distances that I would normally see with a, what we'd classify as a modern seven iron but the modern 7-iron lofts are nearest to 30. They've got more power clubs to do that, so we'll see what they come out like. All the reviews, by the way, of every single golf club, you can click the link up here in the corner and you can watch every single one of them. Uh, spin rate was great, 6,500, so sits in nicely where the 7-iron should sit. Um, Height-wise, coming out there at 33 yards up in the air, and descent angle uh, kind of 47 degrees down, so that's going to land pretty quickly, which is a good positive side as well. Good ball speed, good numbers. Like I say, I just think the distance is going to be lacking slightly, just simply due to the fact that they're not strong irons. They're not in that strong iron category. 
Let's move back to four iron next. Okay, so moving into the four iron, and this is where, again, the tungsten weighting is packed in towards the toe. This four iron is 24 degrees of loft. They're just a good looking golf club. They are a good looking golf club. They've slightly shaven off the front leading edge of the, of the blade as well, which really does look very smart. It's not too aggressive, it's, it's lovely and curved. I don't know how long they'll stay shiny for, that's the only issue. So the problem with really shiny golf clubs is that they don't always stay shiny forever. Let's give this a hit. Well, that's the toey one. Let's see what that's done. I hit that dreadful. I hit that right in the toe. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's not done well there out the toe. Again, that's just highlighting the idea that these golf clubs are really designed for the for players who can hit the middle more consistently than I obviously can. Um, one nine one carry, hit that bad. That was right in the toe. There is weight in that cord in there, which should help with off-centered hits, but that's not particularly done that well on that shot. Let's see what a good one does. Okay, let's see the difference between those two. That's middled. That is absolutely middled. And that's worked out perfect. So that was nearer to 200 carry distance there. 24 degrees, again, they're not overly strong. I know some sets have got six irons probably that strong. 199 carry. So, you know, the difference between the two shots, was it eight yards or so? Eight, nine yards? Probably not horrendous, actually. The uh, club head data didn't quite pick up on that one for some reason. Let's go one more. Oh, there we go. I'm testing this golf club to its true potential. That was a really bottomed, horrible golf shot. Yeah, I think, again, I think you're going to see a lot of golfers moving from AP2, and they might even stick like an AP3 long guy in the range as well. Certainly if they struggle with striking them, like I've just done both of those two, then that was right off the bottom. Very, very low. Let's go one more with the four. Give it a a fair hit out the middle. There we go, it's much more middled. I like the flight, when I've hit the two well, the ball flight has been lovely. So again, just around that 200 yard carry. It's just not giving you a load of forgiveness. That's the big thing with the four iron. It's gonna punish you if struck badly. Let's have a look at some, the four shots and the data there between those four shots, because compared to good, so I hit two really Fantastic golf shots at 199, but I hit two pretty badly. The first bad one was from the toe, that was 191. The second bad one, the third shot that I hit there, was very much off the bottom. That only carried 177. So between front and back dispersion there, just on bad hits is 22 yards, which is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But they're not saying that they're going to give you loads of forgiveness. This is for players who can hit the middle a little bit more consistently. Ball, everything on the ball flights from the, the two good ones was superb. Good spin rate, good launch, good height. Just the ones that I hit bad were bad, bad. Right, let's move into pitching wedge for the final one. So pitching wedge, very typical pitching wedge loft at 46 degrees. Again, looks really smart. They've kind of almost made this more of a bladed look. It's not as chunky at the back. Not that the seven or the four was, but this is even more slender at the back. Looks really good. I think a lot of players are going to be, a, good players are going to be a big fan of these AP2 irons. They feel good, they look good. They sound good. That's a lovely feel. That's soft off the head, that one. I've only put that flag at 140. Go in. Yeah, that's nice. 46 is very typical pitching wedge loft and you get most sets. I know they carry that around the kind of 140 mark. That came out a little bit shorter at only 130. Came out really lovely and high. Spin rate was a tiny bit low, weirdly. Didn't quite go super high spin. Yeah, I like that. Feel, feels great. Exactly what I look for in a feel of an iron. It's, it's got that softness to it, and it's got that, kind of response when you don't hit the middle you can tell straight away if you've not hit the middle let's go one more wedge yeah, 
come out really nice. I would say it's a little bit short than what I normally carry a wedge. If I'm honest, they're coming out a little bit shorter. Normally nearer to 140 carry distance. Seems to be going up in the air, but just feels actually lovely. And I'm not that opposed to not hitting a wedge too far. My pet hate, I hate hitting a wedge too far. Let's look at some numbers on the three shots I just hit there. We can get some data from that. Yeah, spin rate, the first one was low, but after that it pumped nearer to 10,000, which is good for a pitching wedge. Average at 9,200. Carry distance average at 130. 46 degree wedge, it's like I say, it's not far off really. Um, but it's not a power golf club, so I'm glad it's not going too far. Feels the best iron out the three, the wedge. Actually felt the sweetest. So, tightly 718 AP2. A mark, for me if, if personally, a marked improvement from the AP2 716s. I really weren't a big fan of those at all. I think they look unbelievable. I really do. I think they feel fantastic. You are going to get punished if you hit bad golf shots. So if you don't hit the middle, you're going to get punished. It's one thing to really note on this golf club. And I think that's where you're going to see a lot of blends between AP2s and AP3s and TMBs, CBs even, that you're going to get this kind of blended set from a lot of the tight list irons because each set have their pros and cons, their strengths and weaknesses. For me, these are probably the best looking set in the range. If you want to see any of the other full reviews, and I do massively advise you to do so, click the link up here in the corner and there'll be a playlist to every single one of the tight list 718 reviews. I want to give every single one of these sets coming out a really fair test and a fair comparison to give it, they're all individual in a way. I think some of them get a bit close together, but they are definitely individuals in certain ways. Guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Comment below what do you think of the Titleist AP2 range. Do you see there is a big difference in looks compared to the 716s? And are you going to get a chance to try them out? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. Lots more to come. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you soon with the next review.